Day of the Tripods was originally an H.G. Wells novel written in around 1897. There have been many adaptations since, including a film in 1953 and another remake featuring Tom Cruise in 2005, and many other TV series and other media. Generally, the consistent theme across most, but not all adaptations, is that the aliens are tripods. H.G. Wells was an English author, so if you ever visit Woking in Surrey, you can see a life-sized tripod in the town centre. If you like alien invasion movies, then you should also check out War of the Worlds, which is the one where plants come alive and eat people. But can tripods really walk? They only have three legs, which means that they have to stand on two legs while taking a step with the other leg. In the 2005 movie, they appear to have legs which look a bit like tentacles, but we don't see how the ends touch the ground that much. I found various other tripod robot projects on YouTube, but none of them really take proper steps, even the ones with big flat feet. So could we really make a tripod robot that could take actual steps and walk along? Maybe it could walk by pumping itself up and down and taking a step with one foot while its inertia carries it upwards. <laughs> Or maybe it will be able to lean over onto two legs and take a step before it quickly falls back again. In any case, I'm going to try and make my tripod walk on points rather than flat feet with ankle actuators, mostly because I suspect that this will make calculating the inverse kinematics easier because I don't have to deal with the ankle joint. So it's time to 3D print all of the parts. A quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot 3D Printers for supporting my channel with 3D printers. It makes it much easier to get these projects done every couple of weeks when I've got lots of printers all working at once to make the parts in parallel. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, all these parts are printed in Pro PLA+. I'm using some of these 20kg torque servos for these which have a metal bracket on both sides to attach them. And of course there's three legs so everything has to fit in a triangle formation with 120 degrees between the three legs essentially. So we've got three servos and those are all fitted together with these 3D prints that just plug into the bracket there. So with three of those at 120 degrees apart we're ready to attach some more things to them. There is a plate that's going to go top and bottom to hold those prints together though. With that plate fitted and the three brackets fitted to the output of the servo, we can put the next stage on, which is the smaller bracket to hold the next servo, and one of those fits onto each of those. And these are just screwed through so I can access the screw holes into a block on the inside, otherwise it's impossible to put the horn on. And of course fitted on those are three more servos, which are basically going to be the shoulder joint of each of the legs. Fitted onto those are the upper leg which of course gives me the shoulder motion and the leg swing and fitted onto the next bracket are of course the knee motors. So there we've got a fairly basic leg there which can move in three axes at the shoulder knee and swing around and all of those are 120 degrees apart. I've put little rubber feet on made of TPU so it's nice and grippy and that's pretty much the whole structure. We need something to control it though which fits onto the top of those original blocks and that's going to be an Arduino Mega, I've got an RC receiver there so I can control it from my universal remote and there's lots of wires there to break out for all of the servos with power distribution. There's a kind of cage which makes up the robot's body there and as well as protecting the electronics if it falls over it means I can stick the whole thing upside down to calibrate and test the legs. The structure for this isn't that straightforward though, mainly because we've got these three legs that all face out at 120 degrees from each other. So in order to get them to take steps in the same direction, we need to work out some inverse kinematics that takes that angle into account. So that means being able to position the feet in a known coordinate system, preferably in straight lines in Cartesian coordinates, and be able to have some maths basically running in the code on the Arduino that works out the joint angles for all of these, including the leg swing, to be able to get the foot to the required position. I recently built an ATAT -AT which could walk along. The main difference there though is that all the legs face in the same direction, so once I'd solved the inverse kinematics for one leg, they could all follow the same motion and make a walking pattern called a gait. But I still have a shoulder and knee joint on my tripod robot, so let's start with that. But before we find out how the maths for that works, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Fan Home. Fan Home's mission is to inspire fans with high quality build up models and collections from your favourite brands like Marvel and Star Wars. All the products are original designs you won't find elsewhere. 
Each shipment includes fully illustrated magazines full of inspiring content and packed with information like rare behind the scenes images. Just choose your collection or build up model and every month you'll receive exclusive products along with their magazine. Build the iconic Optimus Prime replica. Standing nearly 60 centimeters tall and composed of meticulously detailed metal and ABS plastic parts, Optimus Prime will be the centerpiece of a collection with features such as light up effects and full articulation for maximum posability. Builders will get to know Optimus Prime and the world of Transformers throughout the subscription with the special full colour monthly magazine. Learn about his origins, his home planet Cybertron and the interstellar struggle between the Autobots and the Decepticons. Subscribers will also receive a Transformers backpack, Optimus Prime t-shirt, Transformers keyring and mug and Transformers posters. Click the link in the description to start your collection today. Firstly, I'm going to specify the leg length and have the code work out what the knee and shoulder angle should be. That's easy because I know the upper and lower leg lengths and I know the other side of the triangle because that's the overall leg length I want to specify. This is just high school mathematics, so I went on mathsisfun.com and you can find out how to work it out using the law of cosines there. I've tied one of my control sticks to the leg length input, so now if I turn the stick the feet should move up and down in a straight line as I scroll through all the positions. Next we can solve the next axis which is to make the feet move in and out. As we've already solved the inverse kinematics for the leg length we can treat the leg as a straight line. And then we just solve the next axis as a right angle triangle, passing the hypotenuse of the triangle to the previous bit of code which controls the leg length. This is just some simple trigonometry because it's a right angle triangle. So now I can use another controller input to move all the feet in and out in a straight line. That's not much good for walking though, because what we actually want is all those legs to move in a straight linear axis, so we can take steps in the same direction, rather than them all moving in and out from the centre at 120 degrees, which is what they do now. The leg facing upwards in the diagram already moves in a straight line in the direction we want to take steps, but the other legs do not. We still have the swing axes though, but in order to get the angle we need to do another calculation. We can treat the other two legs as right angle triangles where we specify the two sides in Cartesian coordinates to place the foot, and then work out the swing angle using trigonometry. The hypotenuse of the triangle is again passed on to the previous code which specifies how far the foot moves in and out. So now all my legs can move in a straight line using that swing axis on two of them to flip the leg around when it's needed. And of course I can still mix in the Z axis which now controls the height of the robot from the ground while keeping the other axes consistently placed. And yes of course if I turn it the other way up and put it on its feet as it should be then yes it can shift sideways and that's fine and it can do it with the legs at multiple heights as well which means we can pick those feet up and move them in a linear axis to take steps. I should of course be able to move in the other axis to and from the camera but I haven't done the maths for that so so far we're stuck with this. The next stage would normally be some sort of interpolation which scrolls through all the foot positions from A to B for you. This is usually needed because if we make a step change in foot position then various joints of the leg will need to move at different rotational distances. And if we use the default servo velocities then that means some of the joints will get there before others and our foot won't move in a straight line anymore. You can check out more about that in the ATAP build and also any of my other robot dog projects. But in this build I need the servos to move as fast as they possibly go, so for now I'm not bothering with interpolation. You can see the effect of this if I move the legs up and down on timers though, the feet appear to flick out as one joint catches up later than the other, but when the feet are on the ground it looks fine. If I suddenly move the robot in the direction we want to take steps then you can see it almost overbalances and one foot lifts off the ground, so it seems quite hopeful that we'll be able to take steps just moving in a sharp motion like this. I then made it actually take a step by raising the foot up in the Z axis and putting it down, and that seems pretty hopeful. So I thought I should probably move on and solve the other axis of inverse kinematics as well as being able to move the legs forward and backwards we can now move them all sideways in a straight line as well just by solving one more triangle. And with this feet on the floor we can now move it forwards and backwards and sideways and of course we can move the legs independently up and down in a straight line sideways or front and back. So that means we should be able to put a gate together to have it take steps. Both axes mixed together so I can move in any direction with an infinite number of angles. So I finish programming the gate so it leans in the direction of two legs and puts all its mass over there and then when it almost overbalances it takes a step with the third leg which is almost lifting off the ground anyway. 
One of the things that does happen is there's a bit of drag on one side because as it's moved two feet forward, but it hasn't moved the other one forward, it's not symmetrical anymore. And doing it like this means that one leg seems to drag or bounce and that causes it to turn in a circle all the time. So if we speed this up to 300% now, you can see that in fact it is walking, it is taking its feet off the ground quite convincingly, but it is going around in a circle. The white battery pack at the top is powering the electronics, but that's the back of the robot and it's walking in the opposite direction to that. But you'll see that it's constantly turning to the left and walking in an anti-clockwise circle. Back to normal speed and we can see that it is definitely taking its feet off the ground and taking steps. So I'm pretty happy that it actually works even though it doesn't have big flat feet supporting it. It isn't dynamically stable though because it has no sense of balance so there's no inertial measurement unit in here telling it how to balance so the limbs can react to overbalancing. And that's why there's quite a big delay in between the steps because the whole motion has to settle before it can take the next step. If it didn't inertia would build up as it wobbled side to side and eventually it would tip over. So for now that's as good as it gets. But how could we make it work better? Well do you remember those balancing robots I built? There are quite a few of them in my channel. Some of them are just two wheel balancing robots but I also built a number of devices that use mechanisms to balance on a single wheel or edge. Reaction wheels spin a large mass in either direction around a stationary centre point to cause a reaction force and push the robot the other way. If we measure the angle and dynamically control the reaction wheel we can make a device that balances. I also built a number of projects with physical spinning gyroscopes. A gyroscope will cause a force in a direction perpendicular to the angle you move it in. So if we put a servo on this axis and tune its response to the measured angle of the robot, then we can make it balance on a single edge. Either of these methods could be used to balance a tripod robot on two legs while it takes steps. So that's probably what I'll try next. There's already a project on YouTube you can check out called Gyrobot, which basically is a two-legged walking robot which uses four gyroscopes to balance using gyroscopic precession. The legs are fixed to walk in a fixed gait pattern, and then it's got these gyroscopes you can see moving around on top in reaction to it falling over, which are pushing it back the other way. So here we can see it walking over a pile of stuff, and it works perfectly well. So I guess my version would be like this, but with three legs instead. If I was going to try that, what I'd probably do is have a pair of gyroscopes that rotate around on the top here, so they can rotate around above two legs that are going to stay on the ground, and that would let one leg pick up, and it would also counterbalance it a bit by putting the mass over that side, and I think that should work quite well. I'd probably want a bigger structure with bigger leg motors, something a bit bigger like one of the Open Dog projects, so that's going to be another project. But for now, I'm going to put all this on GitHub, it's all open source, all the CAD and code as I usually do, so if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and discord benefits.